Member for Parks has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Will the Deputy Prime Minister update the House on why energy reliability is important for Australia's booming wool production sector? Is the Deputy Prime Minister aware of any threats to the ongoing viability of wool production and processing in Australia and the thousands of hard-working Australians it employs? The Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Well, um, <clears throat> Mr Speaker, I thank the honourable member for his question. And, uh, he, more than most, would be very aware of the huge turnaround we've had in the wool sector. In fact, uh, we are experiencing the best prices, Mr Speaker, in 29 years, and that's adjusted in real terms. Now, this boom means that people in the Western Districts, uh, which the member would be very aware of, are actually making a dollar. People are actually getting ahead, and this has been assisted also by the investment by the Commonwealth in such things as dog fences, especially in southwest Queensland. This also assists in bringing more people into these districts, shearers who bring their kids, they bring their families in and bring commerce into the towns. And uh, this is something that uh, is so formative for our nation. In fact, the Labor Party was started on the basis of, of the shearers. Now, what's also important is we understand that uh, the returns are also based on the fact that we're getting great returns also from fat lambs. So if we get a ewe and it cuts you about $65 worth of wool now because of the record prices that we're getting, and a fat lamb at about $120 means we're getting about a $180 return from a ewe unit if you put a borderless ram over it. This is brilliant returns, brilliant returns for people on the land. But of course there are risks to this, Mr Speaker, <clears throat> and one of the biggest risks is we want to keep Australian manufacturing workers in a job too, but we're losing Australian manufacturing workers because of the price of power. The price of power has become ridiculous. And what we've seen, and this especially in Adelaide, and Adelaide would know better than most where Michelle's are, one of our last major wool processing plants, and they've said, and I quote, wool processing energy is intensive. So when faced with a $300,000 rise in the contract price of electricity, the business decided to switch to the spot pricing market, but it can provide, prove, prove volatile. In the past week, we've shut down two or three times. It was cheaper than paying the power bill. This is what's happening to Australian jobs. This is what's happening to Australian workers. Australian workers are losing their jobs the and their Barker. jobs are going to China. Their jobs are going overseas because the Labor Party will not deal with the power crisis. They will not deal with the power crisis. Mr Speaker, it's only this side of the chamber that says we are brave enough to build a new coal-fired power station. If we need a new coal-fired power station, we will build a coal-fired power station. It's only this side of the chamber that's talking about Talking about, um, talking about hydro electricity, hydro storage, to make sure that we can actually get new baseload power on. We are trying our very best, Mr. Speaker, in areas such as processing of wool, to make sure we keep Australian workers in Australian jobs in Australia. But of course, until the Labor Party decides they want to go to bat for Australian workers, until they decide, until the member for Hutter and the member for Shortland start standing up for Australian workers, then we'll have the Labor Party, led by the nose, by the Greens, leading Australian jobs overseas, putting Australian workers out of work. And the wool industry is among the most classic examples of Australia so desperately trying to keep Australian jobs in Australia. And who's, what's the, the Australian Deputy Labor Party Prime doing? Minister's They're sending time them overseas.